Guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this week we thought we would do a little test, uh, something that's a little bit different mm -hmm. from all the other type of testing we've done. It's been a bit of a, a debated topic and it's graphite iron shafts versus steel iron shafts and how are they, how you know, comparable are they? What mm. are the similarities in playability? So we, uh, <coughs> we had our uh, human iron barn here do some tests and then just to see how close those numbers would be. Yep, so we're gonna do a little chat beforehand just about um, my curiosity with it and why I mentioned this idea to mm -hmm. you was, I think people have started to see a few players on tour go to graphite. Um, and previous to that, yeah. I think everyone's thought was graphite is for seniors, graphite mm -hmm. is for ladies in irons, sure. um, yep. specifically. Um, graphite is if you have arthritis and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And it can't be built to the tolerance and consistency and swing speed mm -hmm. tolerance uh, of steel. Right. So uh, it's not something I know a whole lot about, which is why we kind of had a little chat about it. I think these are the best topics. Yeah. The, the, these type of ones that where, you know, like you can go into as a tester, really with no expectations exactly. of, of what's about to happen. Yeah. Could go one way, could go the other way, I think are the most organic tests that you and I can do. Totally agree. And, and just reading comments, part of the reason this came up was there mm -hmm. a ton of comments saying, you know, should I try graphite in my irons? Is mm -hmm. there a drawback? Are they less consistent? You know, why would I do it? Right. And that prompted me to say to you, Ian, why do you fit people yeah, for yeah. graphite irons? Yeah. So we, I mean, we carry uh, all, like half of our shaft wall is, is graphite, it's that graphite many. irons. Wow! We, we literally split it in half, and we hmm. go. Um, you know, we have Acra, Mitsubishi product, um, Recoil product. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a ton of, of um, the graphite iron shafts, hmm. and we'll go into a little bit deeper in the specs of them and that sort yeah. of thing in a little bit. And then on the other half, we always have usual suspects by True Temper and Nippon and you know, Project X and, and that type of thing. So right. we thought we would get you to, to try them today and, and see uh, what, it, what it is. So what I think we'll, we'll get you to do, Matt, is we're going to test the exact same weight. Yes. Okay, so let's go, you know, what we'd consider, you know, sort of, the, the, we'll go the heaviest graphite we carry, which is right. 110. 110 grams. Uh, yeah, yep. 110 grams, and we'll match that up to um, a, a pretty stout 110 gram steel shaft as well. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to pick the Acra, um, the Tour, the Tour Acra, the IE110, and we're going to try the Dynamic Gold Super Light X100. So those are, again, they're obviously the same weight. Same within weight. a couple grams. 100, uh, 108 grams on the Dynamic Gold Super Light in the taper tip version, 109 in the parallel tip version. Okay. Um, so right around that 110, and then uh, obviously the, the the Acra 110 is, is what it says, it's 110. And are we looking at similar bend profiles and, and things of that nature? Uh, which is a really, really interesting question. So mm. this is one of the reasons you might look at going down the Acra route over the, the uh, Dynamic Gold route. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of the bend profile with the Acra shaft, it is easy to manipulate it because it has a six inch parallel tip section. Okay. Right? So if you actually go on the Acra website and look at that I-110 and you go to flex, it will say variable. Variable. Right? Can we just show that shaft really sure, quick? Sure, of course. I, where is it? Uh, oh, here. So when you say parallel tip, yes, you're right. talking about this section so, here? So we're talking the six inches, the bottom six inches of that shaft yep. is absolutely parallel. So it's not getting wider. Exactly. It is exactly the same mm -hmm. diameter in this section. Right. Okay. So guys, just so you, you know, and some of the, you know, this is a good little information point because, uh, you know, a lot of people still don't understand understand hard stepping and soft stepping. And, I don't. And how you vary flex on a shaft depending mm. on where you tip it at the tip or the butt. The widest part of the shaft, i.e. the butt section, mm -hmm. is the stiffest. Right. The tip section, i.e. the narrowest section, is the softest. Forget whether a company tells you that it's a soft tip, t stiff tip, regardless of what it is. It doesn't matter. The, the thinnest part is this, always the softest part. And the stiffest is always yep. going to be up here under the hands. E exactly, exactly. Gotcha. So even if it goes, you know, sort of a soft butt into a, st a stiffer tip section, that doesn't mean that the, the butt section will flex more than the tip section. Okay. Doesn't mean that at all. It's relative. So it's all that. So, wall th uh, so the diameter of the shaft plays a big part in how, how, how stiff you can make that particular shaft. Okay. So if we take, think of, of this parallel tip, sit, tip section, so six inches or so, right? And we cut a lot of that away. Right. We're cutting away the soft part and exposing more of the stiff part. 
Gotcha. Right, because you know this this starts to really taper and get wider. So mm. we're taking away that soft section. So that shaft just got significantly stiffer. Whereas if we leave this six inch section and then cut it from the butt section, mm. we're taking away the stiff part. Right. So the, the tapering is there's the widest part is at the very exactly. end. Exactly. You're taking off a so, piece so, of that. Exactly. So we we cut more of the mm, butt okay. section away and leave more of the the tip section in order to get our shaft lined. That's how a shaft becomes significantly softer because we're leaving the soft part and taking away the stiff part. And that's tipping. So when you say tipping, exactly. that's why people know that it gets stiffer. Yeah. I mean, I think some people understand that. I, I think some will. A, a lot of people who are kind of, um, you know, into the, the club fitting, club building world, they'll, they'll be Familiar like rolling, maybe it. rolling their eyes going, we know. But yeah. honestly, trust me, you know, I had a conversation with um, James Thompson, our, our winner of the Mural Wedge. Oh, that's yesterday. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called James, had a great conversation with him for half an hour or so. Great. We were kind of picking his specs and all the rest of it. And um, so we, we were talking about what we're going to do with his wedges. And we talked about his game, and he's playing nip on 120s. Okay. He said, you know, he asked me what I thought we should do on, on shaft flex. So I recommended for James um, to go uh, wedge flex on the, or same as the wedge flex, is, is pitch and wedge and the gap wedge. Keep the gap and pitch and wedge the same because mm -hmm. he only hits full shots with those. Right. Then with his sand wedge and, and uh, lob wedge, he only ever hits partial shots. Okay. So I said, let's go with eight iron shafts. And I was trying to explain to, uh, to James a little bit about how the tip section, i.e. the soft section, mm -hmm is much longer on an eight iron than it is on a wedge. Okay. So that's why we use eight iron shafts on, on clubs we only hit partial shots with. And he, he, he kind of started to understand that, you know, that makes it easier to load. And, and, and when you short side yourself, you still want the shaft to have some feel and that okay. sort of thing. And so same sort of story. Sorry Very to cool. get sidetracked a little bit. There. No, that's, but that's a, um, a real world application of yeah, tipping that, and, and parallel it. section. Exactly. So, so why don't we get you hitting a few shots and, um, and then, you know, obviously chat more about it. we'll chat a little bit more about it and, and I can sort of dig into the, the, you know, technical elements of how you construct a graphite shaft versus a steel and the benefits, etc. Perfect. Sounds okay. good. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, Matt, great job. Um, you know, I, th I think that was that was a significantly uh, worthwhile topic. I For think sure, it was really interesting to do. I mean, what did it feel like when you you sort of hit both? Were you surprised at, at kind of how they both felt? I think I was more surprised by how similar the ball flights were. You're right. Um, really, wasn't much change at all, was it? I would say human human variance would be accounting for 99% of any of the small difference that yeah. we even saw. Yeah. Uh, feel wise, yes, definitely felt different. Right. Um, I think it's just a, a factor of where the weight, maybe mm -hmm. you can speak to this. It, I think I felt weight in a different place. Right. Hopefully this makes sense. Oh yeah, it, um, does, it does. So when I picked up the graphite shafted mm -hmm. iron, I thought, oh, this feels light. Right. I know it isn't light though, mm -hmm. because it's the same weight. And when I picked up the steel, it did feel heavier, yeah. but I'm assuming that's a balance point uh, balance change. Balance point is the key. Yep. Yeah. That is, that's exactly what it is. So if we look at that, um, we'll grab that iron shaft. Just um, I think it's really see on camera, but I can show you certainly, Matt. The, uh, at the the butt section here, you can actually start to see there's a little bit of a weave. There. That's I a can better see lighting, right? The so graphite weave. So yeah. the the butt section of the uh, of the the acro shaft is exceptionally heavy um, and exceptionally stiff. So heavier and stiffer up here. Exactly. Okay. 
The one thing that you have with graphite is that you have much more ability to vary the, the wall thickness of the shafts. Right. Purely because the strength to weight ratio in graphite versus steel mm. is so is, is so advantageous. Um, so that, you know, a steel is, 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 a, is actually a horrible material from a strength to weight ratio. Gotcha. Right. So you, 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 there's only so much you can vary that wall thickness. If you vary it a lot, you end up with an exceptionally heavy shaft. Right. right. And you can't go too thin, obviously, either because then it's too weak. And it becomes uh, super weak and, and right. sort of almost like brittle. Hmm. So, um, you know, with graphite, the ability uh, to, to make, you know, the bend profile exactly how you want it, there's way more upside towards a graphite shaft, like really? way more uh, significant. Even in the irons, because we know that Absolutely. the driver debate is over. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's no sure. more steel in the drivers, yep. we get that, yep. but you're saying in the irons, the technology is kind of getting to the point where graphite may start to be a better option for more people. It, it, if it ever gets to the point where, you know, and feel and preference is, is kind of almost pushed to the side in, mm. in, in the favor of purely, you know, performance, performance. And, and, and ball flight characteristics, there's every chance graphite could wow. win, every chance. Because like I said, that, that, the, the ability to manipulate that, that shaft quite amazing. profile. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I almost kind of wish that I could show you, um, I mean, let me show you this side of it. Um, so look at the wall thickness on, on that. Very, very thick. Exceptionally thick. Yeah. Let me grab another uh, dynamic gold super light here. So, so check out the wall thickness differences. I would say, just for my eye, it's got to be at least four or five times thicker. At, at, at least, least, right? Yeah. And, and the butt section is, is the same sort of idea. Interesting. So, again, hmm. you know, just depending on how you want that shaft to play, bend, feel, load, graphite has infinitely more upside than, than steel. So at the moment, mm -hmm. this is just a quick question, but yep. is the feel and kind of stigma of, oh, I'm a fast swinger, I'm a good player, I don't play graphite. Yep. Is that what's holding people back from actually giving it a shot? I think, I think a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of that is, um, you know, if we, if we look at dynamic gold still being the, the, the gold standard, the standard yeah. of, uh, of iron shafts, it's a 25, 30 year old golf shaft. Which is crazy. Steel shafts are nothing more than steel tubes. Right. Like, let's just let's just kind of you know openly say that. Mm -hmm. Now you can obviously manipulate the the rate of taper. You can step them. You can you know you can do certain things to increase energy and you know that type of thing. But what the reality of it is, you're fairly limited to what you can do with that bend profile. It's quite interesting, right? I think that also partially answers why graphite. Uh, irons, mm -hmm. they, there's such an upcharge over steel. Sure. Because the, the amount of technology mm -hmm. you put into this yep. versus manufacturing, uh, you know, equivalent weight steel, right. surely this costs way more to make and there's a lot more technology in it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's more intricate, that's for sure. Yeah. When, you, when you look at, the, you know, this particular shaft and we look at the, you know, the, the, the weave in the butt, so the heavy weave mm. uh, in the butt section, then we flip it round and you look at the, the tie mesh that's yes. in the tip section. Yeah. Um, part of, of, you know, if this shaft didn't have the tie mesh in the tip section, Matt, one issue you would run into is the balance point being too high and okay. the swing weight being too light. Right. So for, for someone like yourself who swings at, you know, a, a fast speed, you would have a hard time sort of feeling that, you know, where that club is. So that's something I've seen in, in graphite shafts that are sort of in, in the early stages of, of the evolution of a graphite iron shaft. Mm. Sometimes the balance point was much, much too high. So they moved weight down the shaft to help with that. Slide that down. For, so for, for weight and stability <coughs> and, and that type of thing. So, Very cool. Um, I, I, I mean, and you hit them both great. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's not like the graphite way outperformed. Let's you know, look at the, the numbers really quick. But they're they're so similar that, as I said to you, I don't think yeah. that anything but my own variance in swing would account for the numbers change. So, in terms of ball speed, there was about one mile an hour in favor of the graphite. Mm -hmm. There was a fraction lower launch and a fraction less spin from the graphite, and a fraction of a straighter. Ball flight. Just a fraction favoring the, yep. the center line. Yep. It basically, I mean, you hit lovely little draws with both, yep. but you tended to overdraw the. the, the uh, so, right, the temporal right away, bit. it's bizarre because if you looked at that, you would say the steel might be playing a bit softer yeah, for me yeah, than this yeah. graphite. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the complete opposite of what everyone would think. They yep. would think no matter what, graphite's always softer, yep. it's always going to draw more, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that's the case. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's exactly it. We're, we're coming at um, club fitting from not just a fitting perspective though. We actually, you know, a big part of when we're fitting and if you're fitting to the highest level 
you have to be aware of the uh, implications of the fit mm. with regards to the build. Right. Right. So, if there's someone, if there's a player, and I'm specifically looking to to make that shaft to an exact flex. Mm. That six inch parallel tip section allows me to hit an exact flex because I can, you know, I can take a little bit off the tip and hit a certain CPM, right? You know, and you know, that type of thing. So these are 307 or 3.37, um, you know, tip diameter. A taper tip shaft is 0.355, right? Uh, so it's a different tip diameter, and and so we can manipulate this graphite, you know, uh, more. Now that 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 true temper shaft, the SL, comes in a, a parallel tip section as well. Is it as long? Uh, not as long. So no. three or four inches three or something? Or not that, and that's fairly standard right. to have about three, four inches. Um, but six inches gives you a little bit more play. So in terms of yeah. customizing a set and getting the shafts exactly the way you want, as you say, you vary it often from long to short mm -hmm. irons in terms of how you fit them. So right. I can see how that gives you the most flexibility. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the interesting thing, you were, you were kind of chatting a little bit about will it ever be accepted on tour mm. and that type of thing. There was a little spell there, um, it, was, it was interesting. Uh, I want to say it was, um, was a guy, was a Bridgestone player, Matt Kutcher. Kutcher, yeah. Was playing steel fibre shafts. Is he out of them now? Um, he may still be in them, um, but the guys who were spawning off of him playing them, uh, like Brant Snedeker. Snedeker, yeah. So Snedeker turned up for an <laughs> event one time his clubs never arrived, and he played Kutcher's backup set. Oh, I didn't know that right? story. That's so funny. he and he played great with them, and went, "Geez, <laughs> these 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 shafts feel fantastic." End up, he ends up playing steel fiber for a while. Steel fiber being, you know, the graphite core shaft with the the wire wrapped around the around steel the wire. Outside. Exceptionally thin uh, steel wire, thinner than the wire is literally thinner than 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 a hair, than oh, a human so it's, hair. It's actual fiber. It's, like. it's actual steel. It's like super super thin mm. steel wrapped uh, around the graphite to stop the shaft ovaling um, gotcha. and, and when a shaft ovals you lose energy and it can affect uh, and that's so the people know ovaling face. would be i mean obviously it's round here yep. so it would be compressing it would this be way. exactly it'd be, it'd be deforming in shape gotcha uh, which is which is going to compromise club face and lose energy hmm. um so that's that's what that's a shaft that was was quite popular on tour for a while and zach johnson played it briefly gray mcdowell played it briefly hmm. very uh very widely played on the Champions Tour. Yes, I've, I have uh, noticed that. A lot that, of those guys. And I think that's probably part of the reason people think it's just for seniors, because yeah, they see that trend. Right. But, I mean, I can see just from this chat, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if someone comes up with a 130 gram, you know, graphite shaft mm -hmm. with, with, you know, better customization of, of the Ben profile, yeah. why wouldn't a tour player give it a shot and see how Absolutely. it works? Absolutely. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, we, we can see from, from your deviation uh, on, on spin and launch mm. and that sort of thing, the old myths of, you know, you get the flyer with the graphite shaft and I'd never get that with the steel shaft. Like that's, 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 that's the nonsense, early yeah. days of, of graphite when um, the manufacturing tolerances maybe weren't quite what they are today and, mm. and that type of thing. So over the years, as that has improved and, and the advanced technology that they have in the manufacturing processes, these, these graphite iron shafts are going to get better and better all the time. Yeah. So I think for someone who's looking to, um, you know, reduce sort of pain, uh, tendon pain. This is my next question. Wrists and elbows and that sort of thing. Yep. But without having to move away from the, the, the weight and, and flex that they've been used to playing, maybe you've been a, you know, a dynamic gold guy or a, a modest 120 guy and you want to still stay in that, that uh, flex and, and weight category, but you want the shaft to absorb a little bit of, uh, of that vibration. And that's what it is. That's why people with arthritis will play it because it just the vibration yeah. is dampened by the graphite. Correct. That's exactly it. So, um, you know, it's, 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 I mean, there's definitely a place for it in iron shafts. There's, there's no question about yeah. it. It's, it's going to be a, a lot of in the acceptance from the I players to see it as a visible shaft. In the but PGA I think tour. if you can go and, and just hit a few shots <clears> the way I have, um, I'm, I'm at least convinced of the fact that it should be a decent yeah. option. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the, it's hard for everyone to see the standard deviation numbers there are actually better with the Acra. Yeah. So everything is tighter in terms of yardage and, and mm -hmm. there was less variance between my shots. So you could argue that if anything, that Acra was more consistent yep. for me yep. with the six iron, you which is crazy. Could. Yeah. You absolutely could. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely a, a, an argument for it having its, having its place, Matt. Yeah. Now, um, last thing I want to ask, mm -hmm. slower swing speed player okay. is going to graphite purely to gain distance. Mm -hmm. Is that a viable option? Is that worth doing? 
or is that just a weight thing? Are you just doing that to get less weight in the club? Again, I think when you're trying to um, strip back the weight from the golf club, you obviously have to vary the amount of material involved. Right. Quite hard to do when we talk about steel and its, its strength to weight ratios. When you start taking material away, well, you know, we, we already looked at that X100 slightly yes. heavier shaft. There's not much material there anyway. There was hardly the, anything. The wall thickness is thin anyway. Mm. Um, so, you know, when you, t when you want to half that weight down to 50 or 60 grams, you know, you good, good luck. I mean, let me let me grab a let me grab a forty gram graphite shaft and show you the show you the mm. the wall thickness in that. Yeah, it's plenty. Still three four times at least. the wall thickness of a steel shaft at, at three times the weight. Amazing. And what's the lightest steel you can buy? Seventy five. Um, they now do uh, they now do uh, Nippon do it. It's called the Zelo Six. Okay. Um, so it's about high 60s, right. probably 68 grams, has a slightly th uh, smaller butt diameter. Um, you'll probably start to see a lot in maybe lady golfers, junior golfers, smaller hand sizes, um, okay. quite nice. So they, can, they, they don't have to feel like you know, the, 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 the grip is too it's large big, in their yeah. hands, yeah. that type of thing. So Interesting. Um, yeah, no, they, they, can get, they can get steel down there now. But again, you start getting those 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 uh, walls of the shaft so so uh, thin. Now I can really see just looking at the. There's just more material. Mm -hmm. You can see how it can be more consistent. Yeah. It's worth checking out for someone who is slow swing speed, yep. ladies, juniors, seniors, but honestly, better players who swing fast. Yeah. I'm I'm convinced that it's at least a good option. Worth uh, worth trying. That's, worth that's for sure. And you know. It's funny. I, this weekend, I actually, just uh, tried a new uh, a new putter shaft. Oh, okay. Um, called the stabilizer. I saw them in the shop the other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so it's kind of um, a, a graphite. So it's three quarters of the shaft. I'll show a picture of it. Yeah, so. is, is is graphite, and then the bottom half is, is steel. Just and the very bottom. That right? just the bottom part, and and that means you can basically you can actually glue in you know a double bend uh, in there because the problem with graphite shaft, and I've been an advocate of graphite putter shaft for a long time because of the amount of vibration they absorb and how solid they feel. Mm. Um, but the biggest problem was they could only go into plumber's necks. Okay, so, so because it it's limits. A, yeah, it, it was just a straight shaft and you could just put it into a plumber's neck and glue mm. it in, that was it. But if you used a double bend uh, neck, um, then you couldn't do anything with it. But now, you actually, what you do is you cut about eight inches of steel mm -hmm. and actually insert it into the stabilizer shaft, right. glue it in there, and then you can have any neck with, with that stabilizer so technology. So well, then they bend that to an S-bend or whatever you oh, like. Oh, it's already pre-bent. Oh, so it's pre yeah, you basically take the pre-bent you know, Oh, and neck, insert it, I see. Cut it eight inches above that, insert wow. it in there, glue it in there, and, and, and try it. I mean, I, the difference in my, my putter uh, over the weekend was... was really? I mean, I'm not saying like I hold everything versus what I, you know, I never used to, but the different. feel is so different. In terms of the vibration and the feedback and the twist, and you can really feel the, the putter head twist on the steel wow. shaft, none of that. Like wow. it literally, every putt feels like it comes out the middle of the club. Well, we gotta Everyone. test that. We gotta test that on the, on the channel then. I'm really curious, because as I started to kind of formulate my mind, like what's actually happening here? Right. Um, I'm thinking to myself, okay, can we map energy loss on, mm. on heel and toe strikes with this technology uh, versus a standard uh, putter shaft? Okay, yeah. You know, can we, can we limit the amount of, of uh, damage inflicted by an off-center hit? Mm. So there's, there's some room for some you and I to, to do some out. testing. Yeah. Uh, which will be interesting. But, you know, back to the topic here, I think, you know, graphite does have a place in the iron shaft world. Mm. Uh, it really does. And whether that's, like we were talking about, going into these driving irons today. Uh, it yeah, they're all using graphite. 90 to 110 grams, somewhere in that window, whether it's, you know, lighter uh, profiles for slower speeds, or if, if somebody, you know, has some speed and they just want to limit the vibration, who knows? Yeah, so you won't be surprised if, well, this might be too extreme, but... 10 years from now, mm -hmm. does graphite shafted irons mm -hmm. have the same acceptance as graphite shafted fairway woods, let's say? My, my, my heart says no. Right. Um, because I, I remember when, you know, I remember 10 years ago, close to 10 years ago, and, and steel fiber was, was out at the time, and there was some other better, you know, better shafts coming out. Recoil was maybe around five years ago, yeah. UST recoil. and, and People asked me the question at that time, in 10 years, can mm. you see people gravitate more towards uh, graphite than steel? And we all wondered. Yeah. But here we are, five, seven years on, 
Where, just where, a bit more. It's not. It's not yeah. widely accepted. It, it will take. I think it will take a, a younger generation mm. to be a little bit more uh, open to to influence. Interesting. And and the kind of you know like Tiger Woods for example. Like Tiger's never going to play another not. shaft. Other he won't even X100. change and do another steal. <laughs> he's not interested. No. You know he's he's just he's an X one hundred guy and that's what he'll always play. Yeah. But part of the reason we do this channel is to educate and give people yeah. something to think about. And give a balanced uh, view on things and. Um, you know, maybe give an alternative uh, to, to the, the status quo out there. So more to come on this. I think we'll do some more tests, but wanted mm -hmm. to do kind of a nice general intro yeah. and, and get the idea of it out there. Um, Lots of ways we can go with this, that's for sure. Let us know in the comments what else in this mm -hmm. space, uh, graphite iron shafts, that you want to know about, yeah. and we'll, we'll certainly do some follow-ups. Right. I mean, you know, just, just uh, sprung to mind there. I mean, obviously our good friend uh, Rob Kennedy, uh, yeah, who was up right. seeing us from Maryland, Rob was, was playing the 85 gram version of, of this shaft, this Acra shaft, and, was, was and loved it. Yeah. He, Rob and I were going back and forth over the weekend about how you know we're going to get those shafts to him, and mm. you know he he absolutely loved it. So um, you know I think once people try it and and you know see the benefits of it, you know he we were going back and forth about how the Nippon V90 was also a shaft that we tried with him, right? And he had he'd actually curious in his own mind went back and looked at the foresight data. And, and saw you know that there was a significant ten yard difference between the V90 and the, the Acra shaft for him, which is what kind of swayed him that sure graphite was well worth the tr uh, trying. Yeah, I mean if you can give someone the data that proves mm -hmm. it and, and yeah. match the feel and yeah, the vibration yeah. dampening, it's there's so many advantages that mm -hmm. it's I, I think people just will have to consider it yeah, going yeah. forward. Exactly. Cool. Cool. Excellent, guys. Um, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed that little intro into this. I mean, I think there's there's some some sort of scope for us to take this uh, ball and run with it a little yeah. bit when it comes to uh, graphite irons and, and sure. you know different options, maybe a little outside the box from a thought perspective. You know, I think that's what we specialize here uh, at TXG uh, with with doing stuff like that. So um, this is something that we hope to do a, a good bit more of. Awesome! Thanks for Excellent. watching.